Hey guys and gals, this is Tyler, aka True Tactics 2, here with another commentary for you. Today's vid will be episode 1 of the Rangers Trilogy. This trilogy shall cover the history of the Special Forces Unit, the U.S. Army Rangers. Now, many of you have heard of the U.S. Army Rangers from popular culture, including video games such as the Medal of Honor series and the Call of Duty series, and movies such as Black Hawk Down, Saving Private Ryan, and The Great Raid. The U.S. Army Rangers are an elite light infantry unit of the United States Army. The Rangers motto is Rangers Lead the Way. Now, the history of the Rangers goes all the way back to colonial times. Units that were specifically designated as Ranger units and using Ranger tactics were employed as early as 1670. One such unit was formed by Colonel Benjamin Church, who is seen as the father of American Ranging. Church was commissioned to create the first Ranger company to participate in King Philip's War in 1675. This unit was designed to emulate Native American tactics, and to accomplish this, Church decided to learn how to fight like Native Americans by studying under Native Americans. In fact, until the end of the colonial period, Rangers depended on Native Americans as both teachers and allies. This unit was very effective and was responsible for hunting down and killing King Philip in 1676. This unit was also employed during King William's War and Queen Anne's War. Then, in the 1740s, during King George's War, the Ranger unit Gorham's Rangers was established. This unit was commanded by John Gorham. This unit would serve in combat on the frontier at Acadia and Nova Scotia. In recognition of his outstanding service, Gorham was commissioned as a captain in the British Regular Army. He was the first of three prominent American Rangers to earn commissions with the British Army. The other two were his younger brother, Joseph Gorham, and Robert Rogers. The next major Ranger unit was established in 1751. This unit was Rogers Rangers and was created by Major Robert Rogers who organized nine ranger companies in the American colonies. These early American light infantry units were actively called rangers, and this also is often considered the spiritual birthplace of the modern army rangers. Rogers is known for several things, including being the first person to create an official fighting doctrine for such a unit. This standard doctrine became known as Robert Rogers' 28 Rules of Ranging, and also became one of the first modern mon manuals for asymmetric or guerrilla warfare. In fact, this manual is still provided to new U.S. Army Rangers upon graduation from Ranger School. Rogers Rangers were active during the French and Indian War and saw a lot of success during this war. Many former members became influential leaders during the American Revolution. Also, numerous ex-Rangers participated as militiamen at the Battle of Concord Bridge. When the American Revolution began, Major Rogers allegedly offered his services to General George Washington. However, Washington feared Rogers was a spy and refused his offer. Rogers was angered by this and then joined the Loyalist forces and fought with them. However, even though Rogers didn't fight for the Continental Army, many former Rangers did including notable figures such as Israel, Israel Putnam, who was a key figure at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Also, during the war, the Continental Congress called for the creation of ten companies of expert riflemen from Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. This unit was called the Corps of Rangers by George Washington and became known as Morgan's Riflemen because of their leader, Colonel Daniel Morgan. The rangers of this unit would prove very effective during the war. They were responsible for major British casualties at the Battle of Freeman's Farm in 1777 and at the Battle of Cowpens in 1781. British General John Burgoyne himself spoke of Morgan's riflemen and said that they were the most famous corps of the Continental Army, all crack shots. Another ranger unit active during the war was Knowlton's Rangers. This unit was created during the war when General Washington ordered Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Knowlton to select an elite group of men to conduct reconnaissance missions. 
This force was composed of less than 150 men. The third and final unit that was active during the Revolutionary War was Marion's Partisans. This was a unit raised by Colonel Francis Marion, and it was composed of volunteers who had very little military training. However, they were expert horsemen and riflemen. They usually worked separately from the Continental Army and carried out frequent attacks against British camps and outposts and also raided supply lines. While this unit primarily fought a guerrilla war from their island base deep in the swamps, they were also involved in the capture of three forts and also fought during the Battle of Utah Springs, a crucial engagement of the war. This unit also is known for using Roger's 28 rules of ranging. While not an official ranger unit, Marion is one of the fathers of guerrilla warfare and therefore is credited in the lineage of the army rangers. Rangers tactics were also used by loyalist ranger units during the war. After the revolution, the next major engagement that rangers were active in was the War of 1812. At least 12 companies were active. These rangers continued their role as light infantry and also were responsible for patrolling in search of Native American war parties. There was also a ranger unit created during the Black Hawk War in 1832. This was the United States Mounted Ranger Battalion led by Henry Dodge. The unit was composed of frontiersmen who enlisted for one year and provided their own rifles and horses. The battalion was organized into six companies with each company being composed of a hundred men. After their enlistments expired, there was no creation of a second battalion. Rangers were also active during the American Civil War. The most famous rangers of this war fought for the Confederate Army. This unit was Mosby's Rangers, which was led by Colonel John Mosby and was created in 1863. Mosby's unit was known for hit and run style tactics and used confusion to their advantage. Members of the unit were expert horsemen and riflemen. Another ranger unit for the Confederacy was the Mountain Rangers, led by Turner Ashby. The only notable ranger unit for the Union Army was the Ludoon Rangers, also known as Means Rangers. They were commanded by Samuel C. Means and were formed in 1862 as a partisan unit. Their main role was to counter Confederate partisan units, including Mosby's Rangers. They were also responsible for capturing General Longstreet's ammunition train. After the Civil War, recognized Army unit, Ranger units disappeared for over 70 years. Well, that brings an end to Episode 1 of the Rangers Trilogy, guys. I hope you liked it. In the second episode, I shall discuss the history of the U.S. Army Rangers from World War II to the Korean War. Thanks for watching, and as always, this has been True Tactics 2. Signing off.